You know, I had I heard one more said that uh, we all came over here through these Americas, us, the Europeans, you know, Asians, and and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You know, no one ever mentioned the fact that we were already here. And these are brothers you hear on the YouTube, you see on YouTube. I mean, some of these brothers wrote books, you know, and everything, you know. And uh, to my amazement, they're still ignorant what is what is being a national more is. Although they believe they know, you know, they really do. You know, I mean, uh, you know, I mean. As some people in the church would say, bless their heart. But they really don't. Uh, I was having a discussion with Dr. Eileen L. Bay about it about a half hour ago about the subject. And, uh, mm. man, and I mean, uh, I can, you know, I, I, I you know, They don't really have the understanding of what this movement is really all about. A lot of them are st- still dealing with the Moore Science Temple of America Incorporated. Uh, some of them believe that all you have to do is proclaim your nationality, and they'll give you a card and in some uh, Moore Science Temple, and bam, whammo, you are a, a national Moor. You are an American national. Some of them still believe that they are citizens. Uh, they are American citizens. There is a difference between being an American citizen and a U.S. citizen. There is a vast difference. Me, myself, I'm an American national. Okay? I'm an American national. Anybody have any problem with that? Well, that's their problem, not mine. Uh, they uh, believe that, you know, you don't need paperwork. You don't need a paper trail. All you need is a national ID card that's saying that you are a Moor. All you need to do is say that I am a Moor. That's my word. You know, I stand on it. I stand on my square. You know, uh, I don't need no other evidence that, that I am a Moor. You know, they are wrong as hell. They are wrong as hell. They don't know what the hell they are talking about. They said they did research. They said they read the Black's Law Dictionary. They said they did research on history, on Moorish history. Uh, the, the one brother said he had quit the Moor Science Temple to become a member of the Moorish Society, you know, and uh, they don't deal with paperwork. Paperwork doesn't work. That doesn't work, but they but they never done any paperwork. So how in the world do, do you know if paperwork work or not? How do you know that? Beats me. And oh, I say it and I say it again. You know who you are. You know who I'm talking about. You know who I'm talking about. I don't have a, a punch key machine to punch you in or to key you in, so we ain't going to be arguing. Those of you who are listening to this show tonight, uh, I'm here to readdress some things. I'm here to, re- to address the confusion and the misunderstanding in the Moorish community today. Some I heard some of them say, well, We've been we've been an organization for over a hundred years. Oh, I'm here to tell you, brother. No, brother. No, that is the start of the Moorish Divine, the re- uh, resurrection of the Moorish Divine National Movement by the Prophet. We have been here over some hundreds of thousands, even some millions, or even to billions of years. Did you or did you do you not know that we are the Aborigine indigenous people or Tachinous people of this land? And I heard one of you mention that. Not one. I hear you say that that is 
a social artificial construct that was invented by these European sovereign citizens. No, the hell it wasn't. I don't know where you're getting your information from, but it's wrong. You're wrong. All of you are wrong. You're wrong. You don't know what the hell you're talking about. You need to do more research. I don't know what in the world the devil you was researching. But for what I heard, you haven't done any real research. Let me read this book here. It's by Divine Minister Nature L. Bay. It's called The Rights of Indigenous People. Be of A, general and permanent character, class A. Civics instruction for association. Law, order, and government principles. Come and link yourselves back with the families of nations. Come ye, all Asiatics of North America, and hear the truth about your nationality and your birthrights. Noble Drew Ali. No, you had some people saying his name wasn't Al-Hajj Sharif Abdul Ali. His name wasn't uh, Sheikh Sharif Abdul Ali. You know? A lot of been a lot of misinterpretations, a lot of plagiarizations that has been going on with a lot of this literature. Rights of indigenous people. You are not Negroes, blacks, colored people, or Ethiopians. You are Moors, the direct descendants of the ancient Moabites who are the true and aboriginal inhabitants of Northwest, Central, and Southwest of Mexico, Africa, America. The national standard flag of the Moabites and Moors has flown over the lands of Mexico, America, for over 10,000 years, and the Great Seal Pyramid is the signia of the Moabite, Moorish nation of the North Gate, North America. Upon truth and fact, you Moors are bound to the to the continent by heritage and your birthright claims are hereby made Moors or the ancient ones and the true sovereigns of North America by heritage, birthright, right law, and primogeniture. Uh, now, when he said sovereign, he didn't say sovereign citizens. He said sovereigns. A sovereign is someone who is self-ruled or self-governed. That is a sovereign. There's nothing here saying anything about any damn sovereign citizens. Okay? I hear a lot of you talking about uh, you 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 putting your uh, free appellation. Or some about driver's license, or free to drive, free to drive. When I heard some of you made that statement, that shows me again you did not know what you were talking about. A lot of us are talking about the right to travel, not free to drive. We never. Never ever talk that madness. We dealing with the right to travel. No one is free to drive. You privileged to drive, yes. If you are a driver, if you are a traveler, then you are free to travel. What's so hard to understand about that? What's so complex about it? Hmm. Okay, let me move along here. 
This is now the era of time for all Moorish Americans to take our places among the affairs of men. Civic instructions and association is a social and political part of the information directives, which are geared to such preparations for that participation. Be supportive, active, and progressive with you conscious state of mind, or with your conscious state of mind, I'm sorry. In order to change the people, you must change their literature. That was by, by from Noble, uh, Prophet Noble Drew Ali. Moors, go back to the state of mind of your forefathers. Also by Pro- Prophet Noble Drew Ali. A lot of them are always talking about what the prophet said or what the prophet didn't do or what the prophet did. Like they knew the man themselves and never knew the man. What the prophet wanted or what the prophet didn't want. How the hell did they know? They weren't there when the man was around. I hear people bashing the Washita, talking about, uh, People getting their Washita nationality papers, going to this certain brother to help them out with their Washita or nationality papers. Hell, he couldn't help them with their nationality papers or not if he wanted to. He didn't know what the hell he'd be looking at. Talking about they don't care nothing about no paperwork. Well, if they didn't care nothing about no paperwork, well, why the hell did they do paperwork on your ass when you was born? Starting with that birth certificate. You know who I'm talking to. Come on. Yeah, I'm talking to you. And I hope you're listening to this, to this show tonight. I hope you are. And if you're mad, you're upset, I don't care. Because a lot of you brothers should know better. You should know better than that. Talking about you don't need to do any paperwork. You don't have. You don't need to have a paper trail. I heard Dr. Aleem on that show told you what happened to brothers in the court. And Dr. Aleem been the courts. I don't know how many times. So the man uh, 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 got to know what he's talking about. Told you a lot of the people coming in the court talking about they are Moors, they are this, they are that but didn't have no documentation or records to back it up. A lot of the, a lot of a lot of the, a lot of them clowns went to jail. Or some mental institution or whatever for psychiatric evaluation. And this is not something that was made up. That's that's that that's that actually so those are factual accounts. Let me move along here. Moors, Moors, our rightful place in the social and political arena. Moor, M-O-O-R, or Moor, M-U-U-R, is the rightful and correct name of the natural peoples of North America, Central America, South America, Americana, uh, speaking of the adjoining islands, more is the ancient. More is the ancient before the great Christian books burnings, before forced and reconstructed history, and prior to the revolution and the union of 1863 A.D. A.D. meaning in, in the year of domination or after year of domination. Moor is derived from Moroccan. Actually, it goes back more to, uh, farther than that. It derives from the term name Mu, M-U. Came Mur, M-U-R. Then it became Mur, M-U apostrophe U-R. Damn M-U-U-R, Mur. Then M O R R more. Huh. 
how many of you know that you are Moroccans? Oh, man, you talking about uh, Rocco over there, North and West Africa. No, the hell I'm not. I'm talking about the Moroccan Empire here. Over there, North and West America, that's the Moroccan Kingdom. Do your research. Move it along. The word name of the title, Al, A-L, Al, means coming down from or descended down from dustly. Al Moroccan means Moors or Moroccans who are descendants of the ancient Moabites. The Aboriginal and natural peoples of the land are Al Moroccan or as referred to by the, 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 the dialectical altered name American. Because that's what Morocco, Al Morocco is called today or Morocco is called today. America. A Moroccan American is just a sound shift in words. That's my dear brother and friend, Abdullah Il Tali Mosi Bey. About and broke it down. I'm going to repeat this again. The Aboriginal and natural peoples of the land are Al Moroccan or as referred, uh, referred to by the dialectically altered, altered name, American. The primogenitive history and facts supersedes the modern nomenclature such as Indians, Africans, Negroes, Blacks, and Colors, etc. For those who may be confused about the difference or the different spellings of Moor and or Mur, let us correct and Address the misconceptions. Moor, M-U-U-R, and Moor, M-O-O-R, are one and the same. The vowels O and U are interchangeable. The vowel U is also rightfully and correctly used by many Moabites due to the fact that the letter O was considered sacred by the ancient ones and was most often not put in written form. Thus, the letter U is sometimes used instead of the letter O. One may also also find ancient scripts, magamundi, or texts, having some words absent of the of the vowels, parentheses A, comma E, comma I, comma O, comma U, and sometimes Y. Some ancient writings may contain only consonants. Same grammatical principles apply to the spellings Muslim and Muslim. Both meaning bones, muscles, and tissues. Not uh, meaning a lot of, uh, like a lot of people say, one who submits to the will of Allah. The foundation, the fountain of youth, is sought to by uh, by many who came to the North Gate. North America is the early part of contemporary North American history. It is in reference to the Moorish high culture science, involving a working knowledge of the twelve signs of the zodiac, geometry, and navigation. Many histor- historians have defined Moor Moor as meaning navigator. While not totally correct by definition, Moors were the first navigators of the earth and the seven seas. This is why many historians equate the proper name and the native name Moor, Moor, with the verb navigate, or some people must say Moorings, M-O-O-R-I-N-G-S, Moorings, means to navigate. Because more mean, meaning people of the land, land connected people. It also means sea, also, or water. As Dr. Arlene Bay explains it, <clears throat> many, a, many a times you see the Holy Prophet carrying a woman in his hand. 
And on, on the woman's body, it says humanity. He has one foot on land and one foot and the other foot in water. Dealing with the laws of the land and the laws of the high seas. Recognition, social and political, due to the fact that the Crusaders, the Crusaders and the Inquisitionists had conquered and colonized the lands of the Moors. Moors, the Moors have suffered a fall from grace and have lost their rightful sovereign birthright position and jurisdictional powers. North America has since been under the occupational colonial powers of Europeans. Upon efforts to establish peace and tranquility for our posterity on the land, the Moors, Moors taught a select few European neophytes, neophyte meaning beginners, okay, uh, uh, have a few European neophytes, government principles embodied within the sublime ancient philosophers or philosophies by way of Masonic instruction. Out of the compromise for peace and friendship and for the balancing of karmic debt, the United States Republic and its Republican form of government was born. Thusly, Moors, Moors are part and parcel, part and parcel of this said government. The word part means a party to the construction of the United States government. Parcel means the land. Not partial, parcel. You have some of these uh, uh, divine constitutions and some of these uh, uh, felonious uh, Moor Science Temple that says partial. That is to throw you off. That is part of the Cointel Pro operatives to keep a lot of us dumbed down. But no, it is parcel which means the land. The conjunctive political relationship established between the Moors and the Europeans in North America territories can be easily recognized by those who have been exposed to some true world history absent of, co of colonial blackouts and alterations. The following is a ver verifiable type copy of one of the many letters written by George Washington, the ninth President for the United States Republic to the Sultan of Morocco, Sidi Mohammed ibn Abdullah. You got a lot of Moors talking. You get these Moors talking about again back to having your status. Talking about the status is not important. How is that? Your status considers your political and social position in society. Because when you were born, when they did paperwork on you, when they did the paper trail on you, since you said paperwork is not important, since you said the Euro uh, European don't care about paperwork, if they don't care about paperwork, why did they do paperwork on you when you were born? Why did they do that? You talking about paperwork, uh, uh, submitting paperwork at the county record of records and deeds to a society to a bankrupt society, what a well, the, 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 the country was bankrupt when, when your ass was born. But they still did paperwork on you, didn't they? So I ask you again, how is paperwork is not important? How is status is not important? Because on your birth certificate, they, they said you was a Negro, black, African American, colored, depends upon what year, what when, or, 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 or what decade you was born in. You were born in the twenties, thirties, and forties. You will be, you will be considered a Negro. Fifties colored, sixties black, eighties, on on up, African American. All of misnomers. All are incorrect. None of them are identities, as we all know that. 
very well. So I, we don't have an argument on that. But they put all that on your paperwork when they done paperwork on you. Therefore, you have to do paperwork to correct a lot of that nonsense on the papers they've done on you when you were born. Does that make sense? That's not complex. Therefore, you did a name correction. For you that talk about statutes, codes, and ordinances, those are not laws. I don't know where in the devil you've been reading your information, or where you're getting your information from. Those are not laws. I'm here to tell you that they are not laws. Those are color of laws. Color, given a semblance of something other than what is real. Let me move along here. Political and constitutional recon- reconnection. In order to be recognized by the nations of the earth and the nation government in which you live and to be acknowledged by all free national beings, one must declare his and her true and free national name and national origin. Not by standing in some temple saying I'm Moorish American and then walking down the aisle and collecting some kind of flimsy card uh, that's supposed to be a nationality ID card. That is not proclaiming your nationality. You didn't do a reclamation. I'm sorry, you are not national. You never got nationalized. For those who more that are saying this, that's how they get nationalized? Well, I'm sorry. You didn't get nationalized, brother, sister. Moving along. This activated and dutiable uh, uh, social standing is a major determinant of one's consenting legal, social, and political status. Let me read this again. Let me read this again. This activated and dutiable social standing is a major determinant of one's Consisting legal, social, and political status within organized government and within society as a whole. Status, status determines your social and political political uh, a, a political position in society. Ignorance of the basic obligation to self and to society is not given the benefit of doubt and does not excuse one from the possible and actual negative consequences established by an incorrect and colored status. The law begins with self. Therefore, a knowledge of self and being oneself is socially and politically indispensable within within and any orderly civil government. Did you get that? Well, a lot of you ain't going to get it. A lot of you stuck on that foolishness. On the foolishness that you don't need no paper trail. Paper doesn't work. That does not work. Well, if you ain't never done any paperwork, how do you know if it doesn't work? Have you ever tried it? And if you have, who done your paperwork? Who did, who, who, who done it? Didn't they know what the hell they were doing when they did your paperwork? Somebody don't care what's on that paperwork. 
or they just take it and put it on file. That's a lie. And I can tell you from both my own personal experience. When I put my work, work or when I put my work, uh, paperwork for the public for the public record and on file, the lady asked me. She said, "This word, appropriate persona surgeries, we don't understand it. Could you tell us what that means, sir?" I said, "Sure." An appropriate persona means in one's own proper person. Sejuris means of my own right. Oh, okay. Thank you for that clarification, sir. We're going to go ahead and put it on file here for you. We're going to put it on record. Some of them don't ask you. Some of them uh, don't, don't care, but some of them do. And some, sometimes you will be challenged on that, although their job is to file your records, not to ask you what certain things means on those papers. I understand that. But every now and then, somebody may ask you, oh, what do these certain words mean? Because they want to know what the hell you are doing. Okay. Issue of honor. It is the prerogative of all civilized natural beings to honor their mothers and their fathers in order to claim a rightful inheritance and a birthright upon the earth planet. And it is also primal to right law behavior for Moors not to preoccupy their lives, energies, and culture in pretending to be someone who their forefathers were not. Moors are Asiatics and not Europeans. Why do they continue to transact business in European names and think that there is no social, political, legal, or lawful consequences? And they still do. The vast majority of us still do. That's why I'm on the air. That's why I'm on this blog talk show right now trying to get the word out. Trying to school my people. Because we're experiencing a lot of things today that shouldn't be part of our life experience. Those who, who, uh, who remember the Michael Brown incident three years ago, his parents went to the world courts, went to Geneva, but got turned back around. Why? Because they kept calling themselves black and African Americans. And they had no nationality. They had no nationality. That the world courts or international courts were bound to respect. Pole. They had no paper trail. They had no documentations to even say what nationality they were, although they didn't have no nationality. I don't know if they even know about uh, being nationalized, if anybody ever brought that to them. Okay. Moors who have accepted the false teachings and slave deluding brands which the occupational European slave holders have forced upon them, have been living in violation of this foresaid divine honor principle. If the truth and the light that commands the positive benefits of the true polity of, of society would apply to the, for, to the forlorn among us, then the social responsibility of one being in one's own proper person must be taught, preserved, and enforced. It is furthermore stated that it is the civic duty of the national peoples and the true American citizens to aid in the restoration of the elementary and basic teachings and tenets of civilized order and right law, government within North American territories. Did you get that? Okay, moving along here. An important and socially 
function reason that the unconscious Moors of North America are being nationalized and politically taken out of the Negro black status is for them to public, publicly declare and claim their rightful heir status and to assist in bringing them back into the constitutional flow of government. That is the reason why you have to uh, publicly proclaim when you do paperwork. you proclaiming to the world at large who you are. You're proclaiming to the world at large who, who you are and your nationality papers at the public of the county report uh, of the county recorder of records, records and deeds and vital statistics is backing you up. It backed you up. If you don't have any records or any documentation that says that that's who you are, well, then you know you are a fraud. You're perpetrating. You're lying. Therefore, when you go to court and try to prove this madness, and that's why they uh, put you, uh, a lot of them get put in jail for perjury. Okay. Okay. Boys cannot obtain justice, equality, and political stability under the Negro and black brand tags, which are a fraud. The mass protection of being artificially clothed with European surnames legally comp- compounds the fraud, which it does. You're saying you're black, you're African American, then you're saying your name is Charlie White, you know, uh, uh, James Wilson. You're compounding the fraud. Fraud on top of fraud. The mass practice of being artificially clothed with European surnames legally compounds the fraud. Such a low state of affairs constitutes a wardship status. Ward meaning slave. That's another word for slave. A slave ship status. Politically and categorizes those in the subjugation as chattel, corporate property. The Social and Political Redeeming Act of Nationalization as Commanded by Noble Drew Ali, established for the public record. You hear what I said? Established for the public record. That one being more al Moroccan is now conscious of one's national and sovereign connection to this sad government and thus the relative civic duties and responsibilities accompanying their restored. Proper status, conscious Moors return to the literary traditions of their ancient forefathers, eagerly go back to study or studying and working to become more useful members of society. With the enforcement of these ancient civilization principles, one is therefore and thereby made worthy of those benefits which is just which is a just society has to offer, and and an unfull life status cannot be recognized outside of the honor of one's mothers and fathers. And full life meaning and 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 full civil and physical existence. That's what they mean by in full life, meaning that you're not dead, on the eyes of the view of the law. In the Latin word, civil letter mortus. That's what it means. Civil letter mortus means. In dead, in dead in view of the law.
And you, yeah, you have a lot of us talking about, oh, we need to do no paperwork. We don't need, need you know, uh, my word, what I say, you know. I said, no, nah, I'm, I'm a more, you know. My name is uh, Hashan Bay, you know. Uh, uh, th- that's all I need. Yeah, okay. Keep thinking that. And you're telling, and you're constantly telling uh, people that you're constantly misleading the people. Like someone has misled you. All right. With the enforcement of these ancient civilization principles, one is therefore and thereby made worthy of the benefits which is the just which is a just society has to offer, and in full life status cannot be recognized outside of the honor of one's mothers and fathers. The laws which which govern nations and nationals upon the earth planet emanates from the nations. The common and harmonious political relationships which are in evidence and embody with national and international law indicates a generally uniform and universal consciousness about the true nature and origin of humane and organized government. Thusly written constitutions are constructed in the nature of the analytical constitutional makeup of the natural being, universal and knowledgeable, agreed understanding about the high civilization, culture, or fundamental to maintain longevity in civilization, societies, and fosters peace on earth. He said he's dealing with, uh, with the, uh, we'll go back to what he says, um, the cup, uh, let me see here. Yeah, the honor of one mother's and father. The honor, because it is a dishonor to our ancient foremothers and forefathers to call ourselves, you know, Smith, Jones, and Johnson, African Americans, black people of color. You know, that's a dishonor to our ancestors when we call ourselves that. I just want to put that out there. Now, here we come to about nationality. See, nationality is that the nationality is that quality of being a confirmed and participating part of a nation. Those who are not part of a nation have little or no considerations for them. When nations congress and council. When nations, con- Congress, and Council and confer to consider the economic and let me see, and political affairs of the nations, one is outside of the order of nations. Then one is hard pressed to expect the laws of the families of nations to secure one's right, or for the citizens of the nations to come to one's aid or to one's service. This can be most crucial or crucially understood when one is in need due to the neg- negating, uh, negating, negating effects of slavery, forced servitude, human rights, violations, civil disorder, or the one is under colonial occupation as presently exists in North America. Some North America have been held to full servitude and were by deviance placed outside of the constitutional form of government by the European occupiers who have branded the Moors 
as Negroes, Blacks, Colored, and Ethiopians, etc. It is definitely vital and important that the true birthright status of the people, Moors, be addressed in a more formal and documented political format and given considerations on a more serious social political degree and principal level, thus the subject matter and issue of permanent character comes into play within the arenas of national, international, and world affairs. Now here we come to Civil Letter Mortus versus In Full Life. Now I spoke to you a little about that about a couple of minutes earlier. And the reason why I'm going through this, to these subjects, because you have a lot of Moors that are supposed to be uh, part of the, what they call the conscious community, and you know, and still talking a lot of nonsense. I really don't have the really full understanding for what I can hear when they are talking of what nationality is. What is the real process? Of how do you do your nationality? How do you do process or the process of your nationality papers? Why you have to have nationality papers? Why do you have to have them? They believe that all you got to do is just say that you are more. All you got to see, all you got to do is just put a bay or l or uh, Ali Al Day and this is your name and that's it. All you gotta do is say it. No paperwork. Well you can say anything you wanna say. You can make anything come out of your mouth you want to come out of your mouth. But if you don't have no law behind it, it's null and void. Civil War more to versus in full life. The social and political status and caste position of civil letter more to means dead in the eyes of the law. This is the past, present, and existing social and political status as a sign to all persons held under the brands and tags of Negro, Black, and Colored, etc. The 180 degrees opposite social and political status counter to civil letter more to is the superior and clear natural, social, political, and legal status of in full life. In full life was and is the uncorrupted, normal, and honorable status as held by the ancient forefathers of some uh, of the same Moors who have been calling themselves what they are not. All right? Where was I? Um, let see. Okay. Negroes, Blacks, and Colors, ETC. And full life is defined in HC's Black Laws Dictionary on an ancient and modern jurisprudence as tenuing in both physical and civil existence. That is neither actually dead nor civil or more too. Upon this social political rely. Well, uh, let me see here. Uh, uh, let me see what that says here. Oh, reliability with moral and spiritual considerations. Noble Jew Ali, Sheikh Sharif Abdu Ali declared to the Moors, be yourselves. And so we are here today to remind you of that charge which must be fulfilled and it is in your own best interest. I wonder how many people know about the Treaty of Peace and Friendship. How many people really know?
I mean, people heard of the peace, peace, uh, treaty of peace of friendship between the Moors and the United States Corporation. A lot. Of, I hear a lot of <clears throat> Moors talking about uh, being an American citizen. They are American citizens. Judge Taney, what he said after the Dred Scott decision was a conspiracy. It was, it was not a conspiracy. They said it wasn't law. It is law, and, it's, and it still stands today as I speak. It is law. You hear what some said, that the 14th Amendment and has been ratified. No, it has not been ratified. Now, I've been, never been properly ratified. As a matter of fact, anything after the 10th Amendment is a fraudulent amendment. A lot of you brothers that claim that you're national and that you have been done a lot of your studies and your adept work and uh, administrative functions of your temples and whatnot, you know, have you been doing a lot of research? Have you been doing your research? So how many how many of you know what the word mufti means? It means some of some of you know, some of you don't know. For those who don't those of you, those of you that don't know, it means Moors are Muslims united front toward Islam. Okay? Now, I'm going to read this here. It's from the administration functions and us by the rules of the adept chamber, exclusive of the Moorish holy temple of science of the world. Okay? It says here, about the Constitution, when was the first meeting held for the Constitution for the United States of America? Answer. The first meeting for the Constitution for the United States of, of North America was held on May 25th, 1787. It was adopted over a year later on July 2nd, 1788, and went into effect on March 4th, 1789. The Constitution was ratified about two years after the Treaty of Peace and Friendship between the United States and Morocco, which was ratified the 25th day of Shaban, of the 1200-year Moorish calendar year, which corresponds to the August of 1787 A.D., A.D. meaning in the year of domination. But all of you get that. I hope you did. Okay. Here's another question. Why are there only ten lawful amendments to the Constitution for the United States Republic of North America? Here's your answer. There are only ten organic amendments to the Constitution for the United States of North America, these ten amendments are known as the Bill of Rights. Now, I'm going to repeat this again. There are only ten organic, meaning original, amendments to the Constitution for the United States of North America. These ten amendments are known as the Bill of Rights and was adopted in the year 1791. There has never been a constitutional convention. 
Did you did you hear that? I'm gonna read it again. Because I read this before in another lecture I gave on a blog talk show. For those who are listening that remember. But those who you don't, this is for you. I'm gonna read this again. There has never been a constitutional convention called in the history of the United States since that time. Therefore, any alleged amendments after the 10th Amendment, meaning the so-called 11th, 11th Amendment and all others that had followed it, are not lawful, are void, ab initio, and are not a part of the Constitution for the United States of America. Mm, I'm going to read this over again so people can really understand what I'm saying here. Okay, I'm, I'm going to read it all this over again. Why are there only 10 lawful amendments to the Constitution for the United States Republic of North America? There are only 10 organic amendments to the Constitution for the United States of North America. These 10 Amendments are known as the Bill of Rights and were adopted in the year 1791 A.D., in the year of domination. There has never been a constitutional convention. There has never been a constitutional convention called in the history of the United States since that time. Because you have to have a constitutional convention, which comes from the word convene. A constitutional convention has to be held before the House of Representatives and the House of the Senate to convene for them to make any more amendments. That haven't ha- that's haven't happened since 1791, as I just read it to you. Therefore, any alleged amendments after the Tenth Amendment, meaning the so-called Eleventh Amendment, and all others that have followed it, are not lawful are void, ab initio, and are not part of the Constitution of the United States of America. Here it is. It is the Treaty of Peace and Friendship ratified in 1787, a part of the Constitution for the United States Republic of North America? Yes. The Treaty of Peace and Friendship between the United States of America and Morocco 1787 is a part of the Constitution and is binding law. They're not talking about the Moroccan Kingdom in Northwest Africa. They're talking about the Moroccan Empire here, commonly, commonly called today or known today as America. I want to straighten that out also. I hope a lot of you out there are that is listening to this show getting this because it's very important. How is the Treaty of Peace and Friendship deemed as binding law under the Constitution for the United States Republic in North America? The question is asked. The answer is here. The Treaty of Peace and Friendship is binding law and all the states of the United States, and is affirmed as follows. Article 6 of the Constitution for the United States of North America states. This is the Article 6 of the Constitution for the United States of America, okay? It says here, All debts contracted and engagements entered into before the adoption of this Constitution shall be as valid against the United States under this Constitution as under the Confederation. The Constitution and the laws of the United States, which shall be made in pursuance thereof, and all treaties made or which shall be made under the authority of the United States, shall be the supreme law of the land, 
and the judges in every state shall be bound thereby. Anything in the Constitution or laws of any state, to the contrary, notwithstanding. Okay, the senators and the representatives before mentioned, and the members of the several state of legislatures and all executive and judicial officers, both of the United States and of the several states, shall be bound by oath or affirmation to support this Constitution, but no religious test shall ever be required as a qualification to any office or public trust under the United States. I hope you all are getting this. And I hope you have a lot of listeners tonight. I really do. Because there's been a lot of misunderstandings about nationality, how to go by getting your nationality, how to go out about processing your papers, your affidavits, your declarations of, uh, you know, after they, you know, I know your declarations of truth. No. Do you know this country deals with contract law? You had I had one brother. Uh, I heard one brother on YouTube making a, a dumbass statement that the United States is not a corporation. Boy, is that dog. He don't know it's a foreign corporation. Under the British Crown of England. And also under the Vatican. Church of Rome. It, 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 it tells me right there, he's not aware of that. He's not aware. The government ceased to be a, a government actually in 1933 under the Bankruptcy Act. Although it did form as a cover for a, a company, starting with the Virginia Company. And you had the New England Company in the north. When the Civil War came about, in 1861 to 1865, that was a corporate or company takeover. 1868, it became a corporation. It never was actually really a government, if you want to really know the truth about it. But it still had some governmental principles. And you still had real money backed by gold and silver. Until 1933, 34 and 35, in 1933, the so-called United States government asked to cease and function as an actual government meaning it was all but the word they used insolvent meaning insolvent meaning it no longer exists under the House of Resolution one ninety two. This is an act this is an actual fact. These but the buzz are already talking about going to congressional records and Checking these, okay, check that out. It ceased as an actual government. It's no longer a government. It is now a corporation for the people, a corporation by the people. Believe it or not, you don't have to. You can still hang on to that foolishness if you want to. But a fact is a fact. Hmm. 
Okay. I just wanted to read this because a letter from George Washington to the Sultan Muhammad Ibn Abdullah, the city of New York, December 1st, 1789. Great and magnanimous friend. Since the date of the letter, which the late Congress, by their president, addressed to your Imperial Majesty, the United States of America, have thought proper to change their government and institute a new one agreeable to the Constitution, of which I have the honor herewith to enclose a copy. The time necessarily employed in the order's path will apologize and account for your majesty's not having received those regularly advised marks of attention from the United States, which the friendship and magnanimity of your conduct toward them are for mention or afford reason to expect. They having unanimously appointed me to supreme executive authority in this nation, your majesty's Letter of August 17, 1788, which by reason of the dissolution of the late government remain unanswered, has been delivered to me. I have also received the letters which Your Majesty has been so kind as to write in favor of the United States to the Bashals of Tunis and Tripoli, and I present to you the sincere acknowledgments and the thanks of the United States for this important mark of your friendship for them. We greatly regret the hostile disposition of those regencies toward this nation who have never injured them and is not to be removed on terms of our power to comply with. Within our territories, there are no mines whether of gold or silver, and this young nation just recovering from the waste and desolation of a long war have not as yet had time to acquire riches by agriculture and commerce. But our soil is bountiful and our people industrious, and we have, the re- we have reason to flatter ourselves that we, we shall gradually become useful to our friends, the encouragement which your majesty has been pleased generously to give to our commerce with your dominions and the just and generous measures taken in the case of, Cap- of, of Captain Proctor make a deep impression on the United States and confirm in their respect for an attachment to your imperial majesty. It, it gives me great pleasure to have the opportunity of assuring your majesty that while I remain at the head of this nation, I shall not cease to promote every measure that may conduce to the friendship and harmony with so between your empire and them and shall esteem myself happy in every occasion by convincing your majesty of the high sense which in common with the whole nation I I entertain the magnanimity, wisdom, and benevolence of your majesty. May the Almighty bless your imperial majesty, our great and magnanimous friend, friend, with his constant guidance and protection. George Washington. This is the letter from George Washington to the Sultan. Muhammad Ibn Abdullah, and who he was talking to, he he was who he sent the letter to was the uh, was the, mainly the Moroccan Empire. Okay, this feel I wanted to share that with you all. Okay. <clears throat> I'm reading this to y'all so y'all can get an understanding of what all this what is about. Uh, we have some misunderstandings. Or this is what this topic is about: the misunderstandings of the more in the Moorish community. 
the misunderstanding how to go by uh, getting the nationality, the misunderstandings of how to do paperwork that people say that that's not important, that said it's not, you know, all you have to do is just say that you're more and your name is this and your name is that and that's it. No kind of documentation, no kind of recordings, no nothing. Nothing to say this, that this is who you are. Hmm. I wish it was that simple. But it is not. But for uh, but those who, who do not know, please don't listen to these uh, brothers. Please don't. Because as the prophet just said, if you're not careful, uh, there are some brothers that would lead you, lead you right back into slavery. And some of them would do it unintentionally because they really don't know what they think they know. Some some of them believe that, you know, uh, these are supposed to be some highly conscious moors now. Highly conscious. That uh, the 14th Amendment was created to unite, unify the North and the South. But the 14th Amendment was never properly ratified. No constitutional convention has been held since 1791. Only three states voted for the 14th Amendment. The rest of the ten did not. And the rest of the, of the states of the Union States never voted on it at all. Never voted on the 14th Amendment at all. So how in the world is that possible? that the 14th Amendment was ratified. The 14th Amendment puts you on a three-fifth human uh, being status. It deals with privileges, not rights. You have a bunch of privileges, but a privileges can be given to you or taken away at any given time. A right cannot. A God given right cannot can cannot be given to you given to you. Governments does not give rights. The Constitution does not give you rights. It it it, it, it keeps or holds the preserved rights that that's already been there for you. I deal with rights. I don't deal with privileges. These brothers talking about dealing with the, the privilege to drive, the right to drive. There's no such term. There's no such law as the right to drive. <clears throat> In any city or, or so-called city ordinance, or what they call so-called law, in any anywhere in the United States, there's no such thing as a right to drive. It's only a privilege to drive. drive driving is a privilege, not a right. I deal with the right to travel. That's what I deal with. And it's also and it's also upheld by the Supreme Court of the United States. The right to travel. Okay, it says here, the preface and commentary by Divine Minister Nature L. Bay. The Great Seal, More Science Temple of America, Northwest of Mexico, North America. Preface, a most devastating and ingenious, ingenious way in which the occupational union states, so, sociologists, have literally dumbed down the native peoples, was by reconstructing history with the stroke of the pen. This act of reconstructing history served as the deed to the debasement of the reasoning minds 
of the nine ethereal and natural freeholders of the land. Civilization was built upon the art of masonry, stone building, sacred geometry, the seven liberal arts, navigation of the seven seas, and above all, the science of astrology, from which all the science had their influence coming from the East. All of that is more science and masonry. More science and masonry is one and the same. They're one and the same. I heard one brother said there's only three degrees in masonry. Another nonsense. Still, still, still nonsense is being talked about these so-called um, people from the high, from the from the uh, conscious community. You can never build any kind of society off no three degrees. It must be 360. That's when every hat you wear, including your fez or tarba or tarbush or turban, goes around your head. Your, your, it's 360 degrees. Show me a three degree circle. Show me one. You can't show me a three degree circle. There's no such circle. You have to build off the full three sixty. The full circle of knowledge, the table of knowledge. Three hundred and sixty degrees of life. Three sixty three plus six plus zero equals nine. Completion. That's when the birth of a baby comes into life after the ninth month of pregnancy of a woman. Come out of the womb. The number nine. At this at the zero did you have three sixty. Ancient times, the year used to be 360 years. That is a full cycle, which cycle and circle circle has the same meaning. You deal with cycles. No cycle is three degrees. All right, let me move along here. European psychology has been imposed and distributed to the masses of people for the intent of suppressing the natural freeholders, ancient high culture, and to prolong the karma cycle, descended back to the 144,000 inhabitants of which we call planet Earth. Hmm. The subjective vehicles by which the Europeans use in the transformation of suppressing the natural freeholders became usable, usable through removing the connection between the native and natives, identity and the native land. This trinity was astrologically well thought out, well mapped out and allegorized through Masonic myths like the Hyam Mavim allegorical story. When Hyam was was hit in the head by the three ruffians and buried in the shallow grave in the West. One must be be adept in nature's universe to be able to navigate through the dark. Well, in masonry, actually, Hyam Abib also is a solar mythical figure as well. The Hyam Abib allegory that's allegorical to us. England, France, and the United States, the three ruffians. Now we're still in the West, they're still in the shallow, shallow grave. Most of our people haven't woke up yet. The 
That's why the sun rises in the east, or appears to rise in the east. Actually, it's the earth that's moving around the sun that make it seems that the sun is rising in the east. And you see it at its high meridian at noon at 12, at the height of its strength. 6 o'clock, 12 o'clock, and in the evening hours at sunset. Now the sun is dying out, has died. That is a solo mythical figure. Those are the three ruffians. Sunrise, midday, and evening. Those are the three ruffians of the astrological meaning of Hiram Abiff. See, the, the, I'm just reading this over again. This trinity, this trinity was astrologically well thought out and well mapped out and allegorized through Masonic myths like the Hiram Abiff allegorical, allegorical story. When Hiram was hit in the head, by the three ruffians, meaning morning, noon, and evening. The three ruffians, as uh, far as our people are concerned, is the United States, England, and France. The three ruffians are buried in the shallow grave in the West. One must be adept, an adept in nature universe to be able to navigate through the dark. Navigating is the protocol, protocol for all matters, having a divine purpose to exist and to be the beacon light to replenish life by the rays of the sun when the earth's elements in a course of nine months. What did I just say to you earlier? What did I just say to you earlier about the nine months of pregnancy of woman? Of the 360 degrees? How they're both related? Or they're one and the same? This process is known as nationalization. This process is known as nationalization for a person not to know his or her roots. One would inharmonious with nature and nations and with the law that governs the human families. What all what what we are dispensing are universal principles that constituted the jure government all across the planet among the nations. All nations across the board are broken. They are broken down into nationalities consisting of a national flag, a constitution, a national seal, and representation for the nation. The constitution of these nations protects the unalienable rights and birthrights of the natural people and secures a republic form of government. Each nation practices its own laws and customs and must worship under their own vine and fig tree. In order to be recognized as a national, you must claim your national descent name and religion, and through it you will receive national and international protections at law. For one to know the specific law that applies to self, and one must first understand one's status. You must understand your status. Another reason why paperwork does work, you must understand the status, your status. You must understand your paperwork. You must read the paperwork, the affidavits. You must read it and study them thoroughly. Know what you got. Just don't sit a bunch of paper in some corner somewhere 
and let it collect dust. Study them. Know what certain words mean. Learn what status means. Paperwork will work. Okay. In order to be recognized by the nations of the earth, the nation in which you live and all other free national beings, one must declare his and her national name and origin. It is a major determinant, a determinant of one's legal, social, and political status within organized government and within society as a whole. It is the prerogative of all civilized natural beings to honor their mothers and their fathers and to not preoccupy their lives and culture in pretending to be someone else or who their father, forefathers were not. Or who were they not? Who were they were not? They are not Negro or black in color. They were not African Americans. They were not people of color. They were not black. They were not Smith, Jones, and Johnson. All right. That the truth and the light and of the benefits of the polit- polit- uh, polit- uh, polity of society would apply to the for- of the for- law among us than the social responsibility of being and one's own proper person and proper persona must be taught, preserved, and enforced. Status defined in the Black Law Dictionary of Fourth Edition. Status, the right, the duties of the capacities and the incapacities of which determine a person's relationship to a given social class. Through the journey of uplifting fallen humanity, keep in mind that the rights are unalienable or unalienable and are not transferable. Rights come only through divine inheritance by way of the Most High God, who is Mother. Yeah, you heard what I said. I said, Mother. The Most High God. Mother. Mm -hmm. The word class, as defined according to the Black Law Dictionary, class, a group of persons, things, qualities, or activities having common characteristics or attributes. The word indigenous, according to Webster's on the Bridge Dictionary, 1935, states, indigenous, one, born in a native of a country, born, right, born in a native of a country, two, to bear, to produce naturally, original, aboriginal, native, to further specify the nature of indigenous, we must define aboriginal. Because actually the word aboriginal actually is derivative of the word aborigine. Aboriginal, okay. Let's see what they said about aboriginal. Okay. Aboriginal, according to the Black Law Dictionary, 4th edition. ab o now. The first original, the very first, the very first inhabitants of a country. The above term as listed, given as a complete and specific classification of a people who are aboriginal and indigenous to the land. The misconception that we will lose uh, on some social and economic benefits or that we may convenience or have a fear of being discriminated against have caused us as a people to detach ourselves from our true heritage. These types of neg- uh, uh, negating concepts, concepts come from an insufficiency of information. Each nation 
guarantees to each citizen's protection on the land by the national constitutions and treaties. And these guarantees are based on the principles of love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. Take into consideration that treaties, agreements, and other arrangements between states and indigenous people are properly matters of international and concern and responsibility. People, my people, uh, before I got involved with the more divine national movement, I am guilty of that myself. I've asked Dr. Eileen before he nationalized me on many occasions, well, does that mean I will lose benefits? Does that mean I, I, I won't have no kind of, uh, I won't no, uh, be in some kind of trouble or anything? Uh, and he said no. That don't mean any of that. And it don't. You don't lose anything. Nothing. You have nothing to fear. There is nothing to fear. Most uh, most of our people, why they are not nationalizing, because of fear. And this is the fear that they live by. That's a deterrent for them being nationalized people or American nationals talking about uh, all you get to do is read the book, the fourth uh, edition or the fifth and sixth and seventh edition of the Black Law Dictionary and it will tell you that Judge Staney has said the American people uh, uh, I mean uh, uh, I'm sorry the people of African descent can never be U.S. citizens nor they ever will be that, that just that that decision has never been turned I mean has never been overturned never been appealed or repealed it stands as law today it was not a conspiracy as some of you say it was not a conspiracy it was law and it still stands as law today you are not United States citizens you are not employees of the United States because most of you still think and still believe when you go apply for a job, an application for a job, or a resume for a job, when they ask you, are you a U.S. citizen of the United States? Most of you believe, most of you believe that what they are talking about, have, have you been born legally or lawfully in this country? To work here lawfully and legally. That's not what they are asking you. They are asking you, are you an employee of the United States Foreign Corporation? That's what they're asking you. They are not going to tell you that this is a foreign corporation. They're not going to tell you, are you an employee of the United States Corporation? They're not going to tell you that. I have stressed this. And, and previous blog talk shows in the past. But you have some more that's supposed to be conscious, uh, highly conscious, and the conscious community are talking this nonsense. Comes from uh, the European um, uh, sovereign citizens. That's a lie. You're giving these Europeans too damn much credit. Stop giving them all that damn credit for every damn thing. Like we don't have a mind of our own. Everything, everything, a law, uh, uh, dealing with law, what they got, they got from us. The Black Law Dictionary, the Bouvier Dictionaries, in which the Bouvier Dictionaries would tell you the same thing about African de- uh, people of African descent or of, uh, ab- of Aboriginal indigenous descent in this country. Because we are the true Aboriginal indigenous Americans in this country. Because we are not a part of their corporation. And never will be. That's what they are saying. That's what Judge Taney meant.
We are American nationals. America is the country, uh, or you could say the continent. The United States is the corporation. Like China is the corporation. Manchuria is the country. Even though most Chinese don't even know that themselves. They don't know that that they are Manchurians. They are Manchus, not Chinese. They don't know that. You got a lot of people talking about that they are Puerto Ricans. They are not Puerto Ricans. They are Barinquans. Uh, Barinquango, the island Barinquango. Not Puerto Rico, which means rich port. Puerto Rico is the corporation, not the island itself. The island is Barinquango. And the people are Barinquans. I talked to a uh, uh, so-called Puerto Rican woman about it, and she told me I was absolutely right. She said she's Barinquan. Okay. Move along here, getting late, so I'm, I'm keeping uh, keep it moving. Okay. Aboriginal, first original, the first inhabitants of a country. The above term, as, or, as listed, it gives a complete and specific classification of a people who are Aboriginal and indigenous to the land. The misconception that we will lose out on some social and miseconomic benefits or that we may be inconvenienced or the uh, have a fear of being discriminated against, have caused us a people, as a people to touch ourselves from our true heritage. These type of negating concepts come from uh, an insufficiency of information each nation guarantees as its citizens protection on the land by the national constitutions and treaties. And these guarantees are based on the principles of love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. Take into consideration that treaties agreements, and other arrangements between states and indigenous people are properly matters of international concern and responsibility. Everyone who, who, everyone who being aboriginal indigenous people have the right of autonomy, being independent and living by one's own laws, as well as having the possessing the right of enforcing that law. In doing so, a nation guards itself from usurpation from other nations. Since representatives from several nations convene to assist in, in the concerns of international conflicts and form an organization known as the United Nations. During the period of World War II, the United States consists United Nations consists of a Security Council, a General Assembly, and of subordinate agencies. The United Nations was lawfully chartered by sovereign ambassadors, which serve as the international treaty for all nations. Every nation, including federal, state, and local authorities, are bound by oath to support. Once you understand yourself, your status, and understand the position that governments hold in their limited delegated powers, then the lion and the lamb can land, can uh, can lie down together in yonder hills, and neither will be harmed. The Declaration of Human Rights, which was adopted and proclaimed by the General Assembly of the United Nations, Resolution 217, A. Parentheses 111 of 10 December 1948. But those who will talk about the Washita, uh, by the way, but those who talk about the Washita uh, National Empire, we are recognized by 144 nations. 
We are recognized by 144 nations of the world. Our United Nations number is 215-93. We are recognized as a nation. And also, we have a language that we speak. You always hear us say, a ha'ate washita east, meaning, may my spirit and your spirit spring forth with the jaguar. That's what that means. Sometimes when I end the show, you, you hear me say, bawasama dokunda, meaning, peace family. Still learning the language. My great great grandmother was Choctaw, which is Washita. I have blood lineage to the Washita Nation. You ask me if the, uh, 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 people uh, ask me when I say tell them I am a Moor. But as all other peoples of African nations, uh, Australia, New Zealand, I will tell them like they uh, like they say it themselves. A person from New uh, 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 from Nigeria or Ghana will say he's from those countries. Then he will tell you what tribe he belongs to. I don't like to use the term tribe. The term tribe. Because I, I, I know I see that's another social construct. Or uh, what nation I belong to? I'm telling I'm of the Washita Choctaw nations. I'm Washita Choctaw. Or I might uh, say it, I'm Washita Washita Choctaw. That's my tribal nation. That's my nation. Not just a Moor in North America. You are more of North America. You are more meaning uh, land connected people. You are land. You are land connected person. Okay. What, what what tribal nation do you belong to? The people that preside over the land of America that you belong to. Well, I'm Washita, Choctaw. Some say Yamasee. Some say Lenape. Some say Nanako. Some say Akitiwa, times called Cherokee, etc., etc., etc. It goes deeper than saying, I am a Moor here in North America. Then you've got to be more specific. What nation tribe do you belong to? Okay? Well, I only have 90 more seconds on the day. Uh, as I say all, as I, be on, as, uh, as I uh, give lectures on these shows, I do not uh, wish to insult or anything like that. I wish to uh, educate. And I don't want you to leave this show uh, thinking, um, no, I'm saying something that I'm not saying, actually. I'm here to educate and to correct things. And as I say to you, in the Washita term language, Bawasamatakunda, peace family, and peace to all the families in the world. Ehawate Washita East. Peace. Islam. <laughs>